EXO45 or XO45 Patriot Exosuit is finally here after the Helldivers 2 community liberated Tian Quan in less than 24 hours. The developers expecting it to take us around 72 hours. Shame on the developers for not having enough faith in liberty and democracy. In this full guide for the new stratagem, I'm going to cover everything you need to know from how to unlock it to how effective its weapons and armor are against every enemy type. The XO45 mech is available to all Helldivers for a limited time as a reward for the liberation of Tian Quan and can be used for free by each Helldiver once per mission. If you want to unlock this powerful stratagem permanently, however, you'll need to be at least level 25 and you'll have to cough up 20,000 requisitions. Unlocking it permanently will allow you to call it in twice per mission with a 600 second or 10 minute cooldown. Once you throw the beacon, the XO45 will be brought in by the same ship that picks you up for extraction, which is great because it comes with the same benefit of the ship providing fire support for a small window as it gets close to the planet's surface and drops off this bad boy. Now I found this to be just as effective as when you call on the extraction ship, so it'll get you a couple kills, but it's not going to linger for a long time. It lasts roughly five to six seconds. The ship's basically just shooting an auto cannon. So the Patriot has two weapons equipped on it. The first one being the Gatling gun on the right side. And this holds a thousand rounds. It performs similarly to the Gatling sentry gun. So it has medium armor penetration and it's just as effective as killing enemies as the sentry is. Your other option is on the left side, the rocket. And I found this to be actually more effective than the rocket sentry. I don't know if that's because you can place the shots exactly where you want them to go or if it actually does more damage. But regardless, it's definitely more effective. The mech also comes with a melee ability. To use it, you press the same button as you normally would when you're playing as your soldier. Here in a few minutes, I'll show you guys what it looks like against some of the bugs. Just a heads up though, it isn't super effective. It's more of a last resort thing like your normal melee is. There are a couple limitations when you're in this thing. The first and probably the most notable is that you cannot call in other stratagems while you're inside the mech. However, I have a suspicion that this will be not necessarily changed, but added. And the reason being is this hole right here that I have circled on screen on the top of the mech. In Helldivers 1, that's where this little tube comes out and it shoots stratagems out of it. So I think they're going to add a whole new tab to the ship upgrade system, either for vehicles in general or just for the mechs and that'll probably be an upgrade later on but as of now you can't use any other stratagems while you're inside it the other downside i see here is that things like the guard dog rover don't actually work when you get inside the patriot it'll just land here on top of the rover and wait until you get back out. And it doesn't shoot at any enemies. I tried backing up to some enemies and seeing if it would shoot them from behind and it does not do that. As far as movement goes with the mech, you have one speed and one speed only. There's no sprint function with it, but I find the speed to be pretty quick. It seems to be about as fast as sprinting on foot. So you can still get around pretty well and it does not have a jump ability or anything like that. So any high terrain, you're not gonna be able to get over. All right, now against nests, this thing is obviously very effective at taking them out. I find it to be just as good as the grenade launcher, maybe a little bit better. However, you're limited to 14 rocks Rockets, so unless you're in desperate need of taking out a certain nest or something, I would be saving these rockets for the big enemies. That's what they really specialize in taking out. Things like the chargers, the bile titan, the hulks, the tanks, and then those cannon turrets the automatons have. It's very effective at taking out all these things. And we'll go over that in a little bit. I'll show you examples of each one. Here's a melee example against some of the more common bugs. I didn't test this against the automatons because I don't think it's practical at all to even try to melee them since most of them are ranged. And even against the bugs, it's not very effective. So you'll see here, I stomp these slightly bigger guys quite a few times and they still don't die. The smallest bugs do die in one melee hit, but it takes quite a few hits for these guys to start dying. And down there at the bottom middle, you'll see my kill count from just melee. It starts to rack up a little bit, but again, this isn't very practical and you're taking damage as you're doing this. So you might as well just shoot them with the Gatling gun. Here's some more gameplay of the Gatling gun against some of the more common bugs. As I said before, it's just as effective as the Gatling Sentry, and it just chews through them pretty easily. It's also pretty durable against the smaller bugs. You can take quite a few hits before you actually go down. The Charger actually misses me there, so didn't interfere with the testing. But yeah, you can take quite a few hits from the small bugs. See that the mech starts to smoke once you're about to go down and then you'll basically just get ejected at like Mach 10 once you're done. As far as the bile spewers go they're extremely easy to take out just like usual. Minigun will do the trick you really don't need to use the rockets just aim for the head that's the weak spot. And when it comes to durability against these things you're pretty durable they don't do a whole lot. See there, it hit me with acid. This one's melee attacking me. I'm not even smoking it. It's two acid spits. Three, four, five, 
A bunch of them meleeing me. These, these things are basically no threat to you whatsoever. And then here I tried to capture some gameplay of the durability against the Stalkers. I did get hit a little bit by some of the other enemies, but as you can tell, this thing's pretty effective at taking damage from the Stalkers. As far as killing the Stalkers goes, it's basically the same as the common bug. There's nothing special to it. You're going to be able to kill it pretty quickly with the Gatling gun. When it comes to killing chargers, the results can vary pretty drastically depending on where you hit them with the rockets. Obviously, going for the weak spots like the legs is the more effective strategy, and you'll find that it kills them significantly faster. Whereas when you aim for heavily armored areas like the head, it takes a lot longer. As you can see, the Gatling gun just bounces off them like you would expect. The rockets, however, are extremely effective against the charger. Here in this first example, one rocket takes off the leg armor, and then I can proceed to minigun it down. The second rocket wasn't even necessary. You saw the armor come off with the first rocket and then you can just gaddling down his leg really quickly. Here's another example where I hit him with the first rocket. His leg armor comes off. I shoot him a little bit with the gaddling gun, but I wanted to test him more with the rockets. And there you see the second rocket just downs him instantly. And then here's another example of the charger with the gaddling gun. The bolts are just ricocheting off. And here it actually takes quite a few more rockets because I'm aiming for the head. But as you'll see, it staggers him each time he's hit by the rocket. So it interrupts his charge, which is still pretty decent. So it ends up taking about six rockets here to kill him. When it comes to durability against the charger, I've seen a lot of people say so far that you can die in one charge from the charger, and I did not find that to be the case at all. So here's this example. I get hit by the charger quite a few times, and I'm still standing. In fact, he hits me three times there, and I'm not even smoking yet. But once he lifts his legs up and does that, like, ground pound attack, I think that's where the damage is really coming from, because he finishes me off immediately right there, and I wasn't even smoking yet. So I think people are getting charged down, and they're getting immediately followed up by that ground pound attack, and I don't think it's actually the charge that's necessarily killing them. That fast. Here's another example where I'm hit and my leg actually catches on fire. I think I was actually pretty damaged before this, but regardless, I keep getting hit by the charges and it's not until they hit me with a front leg attack where I actually blow up and go down. So I think as long as you keep backing off of the chargers, even when they're charging at you, I think you're okay. Just don't let them hit you with that front leg attack. As far as Bile Titans go, it's kind of the same story here. Gatling Gun will bounce off like it typically does. And then the rockets can definitely down them pretty quickly if you hit the jaw. So here I take him down in about three shots, but I've actually been able to do it in two shots as well. Just depends where you're hitting them. Here's another example against the Bile Titan. You'll see that the Gatling Gun's bouncing off like it should. And it takes me about five rockets this time due to me missing quite a bit. But you'll see chunks of his armor coming off at the same time when it comes to durability against the bile titans i'll just say you do not last very long at all basically any hit from the acid is going to instant kill you you'll see here he's missing at first but i walk into it and i instantly just go down as soon as i get hit with that acid i basically just immediately go down and die so it doesn't seem to protect you at all from their acid so here's a melee example from the bile titan just one hit and actually i think i got hit by something else from behind but yeah, you don't last long either way against the bio titans all right now we're moving on to the automatons and as far as their fabricators go it's basically kind of the same story it's pretty effective against them you'll see here it takes me about two rocket shots right at the vent hole to destroy it and again you want to save these rockets for the high tier enemies you don't really want to be wasting it against the fabricators if you don't have to and then here's some gatling gun gameplay against some of the general automatons just to show you how effective it is again it's just as effective as the sentry gun basically As far as testing durability goes against the individual automatons, it's extremely hard to do due to the nature of them being mostly ranged. So I'm inevitably getting hit by other ranged automatons when trying to test against some of the bigger stuff. Here's a general durability test against a group of automatons. And you'll see you last a decent amount of time, but it's definitely not as much as the bugs. The Scow Striders, or the ATSTs as I like to call them, as you'd expect, the Gatling Gun does nothing to their front armor, so you have to hit them from the sides or behind, but one rocket will take them down. I would try to rely on your allies taking them down if they're nearby. Just toss an impact grenade or something at them, as you don't want to waste your rockets on them since they're so common. But if you have to, it just takes one rocket. Even if you aim it at their feet, you can get two of them or three of them if they're grouped up pretty tightly. One enemy type you're really going to want to watch out for is the Rocket Devastators. These guys put you down insanely quickly. Right here, this gameplay, this is a fresh mech that I just called down and you'll see these two rocket devastators absolutely just murk me.
When it comes to drop ships, the mech is extremely good at taking them down. It takes two rockets to one of the engines and it's down. Here you see I missed one of the rockets, but the other two land and it just goes down super quick. So this is actually a good use of the rockets here. And then here's another example for you guys. You'll see I missed the second rocket and then the first and third connect and it goes down super quick. When it comes to the Hulks, I had a really hard time getting some 1v1 gameplay against them before the servers went down. So here's me fighting two Hulks. But I kind of get a good example of how many rockets it takes. It takes me three rockets to take down the first Hulk. And as far as durability against the Hulks go, this is kind of the best example I could get. Although there were other enemies firing at me. Here's a second example. Again, it takes three rockets to take this guy down. Like I said before, the durability is really hard to test against individual automaton units. So I had other guys shooting at me. It was pretty weak, small arms fire. But just a general idea how long you're going to last against the Hulks. When it came to the tanks, it was really, really hard. This was probably the hardest example I could get for you guys, but here I fight two tanks. One cannon from these will destroy you outright, but you'll see it takes me about three rockets and a little bit of Gatling gun fire. I don't know if the Gatling gun fire even helped there, but it took about three rockets to take down the first tank. And then the second tank, obviously I ran out of rocket ammo, so it was just my Gatling gun. Didn't really do much. And here comes the cannon. And yeah, that's how you go down right there. So just don't get hit by the cannon. Takes about three rockets, I'd say, maybe four to take down a tank. And then for the final enemy type we'll go over, it's these towers that they have at some of the automaton bases. These things actually go down and I'd say two shots. Two of my examples here, one of the rockets actually hits below the turret itself. So I'm assuming it's two rockets. Should be a two rocket kill as long as you hit right on the turret. And in this final example, you see I actually one shot the tower. It had taken no damage previously and I didn't even hit the vent on the back. So assuming you hit the vent on the back, I'd say it's a one shot kill. And then as far as durability goes, I probably don't even need to show you guys this, but it's obviously a one shot. You get absolutely destroyed by those turrets anyways that's the full guide for you guys on the xo45 patriot exosuit hopefully you guys enjoyed it follow me on twitch at omaha01 let me know if there's anything i missed i felt like i covered just about everything there is one thing i really wanted to test but didn't get the chance today because the server's going down and that was whether the armor is better on the front compared to the sides and back of the exosuit i don't think that's the case but i wanted to test that out and didn't get the chance so let me know down in the comments if anybody's able to find out about that anyways Subscribe if you guys want to see more Helldivers 2 content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.